God bless you guys. This is Kelvin Zayas. I'm from the Single Young Adults Ministry, and I'm here to give a word on grace. Um, I hope all is well. Um, as we begin to go through these phases of entering back our normal way of living through this pandemic, um, it's I hope all is treating you well. And by the grace of God, I was able to get a haircut because in that last video, I was looking pretty crazy. But God is good, amen. But yes, I want to talk on the topic of grace and how that pertains to to single young adults and the key words that i want to bring out is in infusions chapter 2 verse 8 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of god grace is a gift given to us by god um the spiritual definition of grace would be the free and unmerited favor of god essentially it's undeserved favor is an undeserved favor or undeserved gift from god and how that applies to to young adults who are single or maybe not single um singleness believe it or not is a gift from god in our singleness we have more opportunities to 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 grow and to focus on our relationship with god and you might be wondering to yourself how does how is being single a gift from God. How does it mean that having a boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, a husband, wife? How how's that a gift of God? That an undeserved gift for God. Um, and the reason that may be is because in our season of singleness, God helps us grow. He helps us grow as individuals, build up a character. He molds us into the man or woman of God that He set us out to be. Um, he protects us from unnecessary relationships that we didn't have to be in and protects us from heartbreaks that we don't have to go through or didn't have to go through at all um and we he he gives us the gift of just having more time to spend with him to focus on him and that's not saying that you can't have all those things to um uh you in, in your singleness that you can't when you're not single, if you have a boyfriend, that you don't have that time to spend with God. I'm not trying to say anything like that, but we do have more time in our season of singleness, and that is a gift. God has freely given us all these things in our season of singleness, even when we don't deserve it, even though we've failed God countless times um, in our daily lives or, or in the past, God gives us that freely, even when we don't deserve it. And that's an awesome thing to to, to have we may not realize it but all that that individual growth and protection like that, that that's a gift and even though we don't deserve it god freely just gives it to us amen um and to give us a better perspective on that um i want to ask you a question that you gotta ask yourself as i'm going through this word which is uh is jesus enough in my life is jesus enough in your life it's god grace enough in your life um, so with that being said, I just want to get into two quick points that kind of give you a perspective on that, and hopefully you could be edified by those two quick points, amen? So the first point is God's grace has no limits. Um, in the book Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32, which I don't want to read every verse, it could take a while, but quickly I just want to summarize. Jesus tells a story about a father and two sons. And the younger son demands from the father, hey, I, I want all your inheritance. I want my share of the inheritance. I want you to give me some, your possessions, father. And the father says, okay. Father gives the son a lot of his possessions, the inheritance. And the son, soon after, he, he leaves for another country to pursue worldly desires. And the son soon finds himself in a rough situation where he was... He used up all his money for stuff like prostitutes and worldly things that he used selfishly for his own pleasure. Um, the son found himself starving because he ran out of food. And around that time, that period of time, um, there was a there was there was a food storage in the world, and the son was starving. So the 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 son started working at a farm feeding pigs in a in a pig's den, it was a very dirty pig's den, and. In our season of sickness, sometimes we find ourselves kind of like that son, leaving God's presence, leaving God's grace, and 
to pursue worldly desires. Um, or maybe you're not, you're watching this video and you're not a Christian. You're not, you're, you, do, you don't know who Jesus is and you're in, you're in the world right now. And you're just doing these, all these things and you can find yourself in a very tough situation. Um, and in that season, we, 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 we don't want to find ourselves like that son where we leave to chase us after things that we didn't need that wasn't going to provide for us. Um, those selfish desires could put us in a very dark place that's away from God and his presence. And that could be in the form of you chasing this really attractive guy or a really uh, attractive woman to, to cause you, they look good or whatever. You, you think they look great. They're, they're awesome, great personality. And you decide to spend less time with God and your season of sickness to pursue uh, that relationship. And because you love God's presence, that most likely was a relationship you probably were never meant to be in the first place. And yet you deliberately left God's presence for that, for that worldly desire. Or it could be in the form of you just want money. So all you're chasing is money, money, money in the form of jobs or who knows, gambling habits or whatever the case may be. Um, that money becomes um, that source of grace where we, we, we want this satisfaction from. And again, just like that son, we find ourselves in a very dark place, uh, a very dirty place where we're, we're starving. Um, we don't know what to do. We, we've lost everything. We're just alone. But that's where the beauty of God's grace comes into play. Um, later on in that story, the son realizes that how bad the situation he is and just how much he messed up. Um, so he decides that he wants to come back to the father. And when... He does. He, he, the, the father sees him coming down the road. The son comes looking like a hot mess. <laughs> and the, the father is so happy to see him. He runs down the road to see him, greet him with open hands, gives him a kiss, say, my son, my son, I love you. I miss you so much. And the son, because he realizes what he's done was wrong, he says, Father, I'm so sorry. I, I've I've done you dirty. I, I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Like, I, I've, I've sinned. I'm, I'm so sorry. And that's where God's grace comes into play. Just like the Father, God welcomes us back when we realize that we fell off God's presence, that we've discarded God's grace for worldly things. And God said, no, it's okay. Like, just, I'm, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy that you're back. With open arms, with so much love, um, the Father to the son, throws a party to celebrate the son's return by telling his servants, hey, give him the, the finest clothes, like clothe him, kill the, the fattest cow that you have so we could have a feast and make some pinchos or whatever. I don't know. But the father was just so happy to see him that he did all these things for him. And he said, hey, no, it's okay. It's all right. And that's the thing. The son, like I said earlier, said that, I'm sorry, I, I've messed up. I'm, not, I'm no longer worthy for you. But that's the thing. We, we were never worthy in the beginning. Um, grace is, again, an undeserved gift. It's an undeserved favor. We were never worthy for God's grace, and yet he's given that to us anyway because he loves us, because he wants a relationship with us, because he wants us to, to, to grow. And that's where the beauty comes in. And, and so long as we just focus on God's grace and, and, and the gifts that he gives us and the blessing that comes with that, we won't find ourselves in a, a dark situation like the, the, the son in this story did, so long as we just focus on God. And just like the Father, God will walk in us with just loving hands. He, he wants us to come and just happy and says, no, it's okay, you're forgiven. You're fine. You were dead. You were lost. But, you, but you're back here with me. So don't think that maybe in your season of singleness, you've, you've, you, you fell off, you backslidded, and you, you discarded God his grace to chase worldly desires or to chase a, a woman or a man or money or this and that or whatever the case may be. Don't think that because you did those things that you're not worthy that or you don't deserve these things, that God is not going to welcome you back with open arms. No, you are right by one thing. You're, you're not worthy, but that's the thing. That's, that's, that's the amazing thing about God's grace. Like, it's okay. Like, God's grace is enough for you. you, you he gives it to you freely because... Even when you don't deserve it, he still chooses to love us. So don't think that you can't come back. That God's not there waiting for you with open arms. He's there waiting for you um, in that season that you're in. And 
you don't need a, a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever the case may be, or money, to give you that satisfaction of grace. God gives you that. He's already given you that. You just have to put your faith and believe that like, that's there for you. Amen. Um, and I want to go to my next point now, which is to set your eyes on Jesus. Um, to put it simply, where Jesus went, grace accompanied him. Um, there were many examples in the Bible where Jesus did so many things for those around him who didn't deserve it, and yet he did it anyway by his grace um, because he, he wants us to have those things. For example, the, the paralyzed men whose, whose, whose friends went through so much um, to get him to, in the presence of Jesus to be healed, and it's by their faith that they were able to make that happen, and God... By the grace of God, Jesus not only just healed the paralyzed man, but he forgave him of his sins. Um, the woman at the well, Jesus helped her, helped her see the, her wrongdoings, helped her realize that what she's doing was wrong. And by grace that Jesus demonstrated and given to her, she was forgiven. Even if she didn't deserve that, God, Jesus still forgave her of her sins. God still gave his grace to her. Um, Jesus healing the man with leprosy. People shun that man. That man probably thought that he didn't deserve to be healed, but and yet that man showed faith that regardless, even if he didn't deserve it, that Jesus would heal him and Jesus was showing grace. And by the grace of God, Jesus did heal that man and provide him with so much love and hope. Um, there are many other examples of where Jesus and showed grace and gave grace to people in the Bible. I could go on, but simply understand that where Jesus went, that's where grace was. Where Jesus went, that's where grace was given. Um, and one of the greatest acts of grace, which is also the greatest acts of love, um, Jesus was at the cross. He, he gave his life for us, and that was the greatest gift of grace that, that could have been given to us, um, that that grace, that undeserved grace of having our sins forgiven, even when we didn't deserve it, um, our sins are still forgiven because God freely gave that to us. Um, and just have to remember that God's grace is already given to us, and we shouldn't try to chase this concept of grace from other things. We should seek grace from a man or woman in our season of singleness. We shouldn't chase the concept of grace in money or whatever the case may be, we, we should focus our eyes on Jesus um, who gives grace and not the concept of grace and other things because he's the one that gives it. No one else can. Nothing else can. Amen? Um, I remember um, in my beginning stages of being a Christian, um, it was awesome. I was on fire for God. Like, oh, I want to learn this, this, and that, or whatever. I want to understand how God could do this in me, blah, blah. Um, but I went through a dark moment or I let my flesh, you know, I would have this battle with the flesh and just like the, the son from earlier, you know, I would seek that grace from other things in my life um, because I was being careless or whatever the case be, I just, I wanted something more. And I found myself in a dark situation where, you know, I was seeking grace from, from, from someone or something else and I, I, I my my walk with God was 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 tampered with. It was it was it wasn't good looking good. But once I focus and fix my eyes on Jesus and realize and understand that God's grace is enough for me, um, that changed my whole perspective on grace and understood that I don't deserve it, but God still gave that to me. And my walk is so much better. My season of singleness is, is so much better because of that grace that was freely given to us. We have to remember that. In this season of singleness, that remember, like we, we need to seek the God that gives us freely that gift, Amen. Um, so I just want to conclude with this and come back to the, to the question that I asked earlier, which is, is Jesus enough in my life? And simply, yes, Jesus is enough. He's more than enough in our life. He's done so much. His grace has provided so much in our lives that we don't realize and we just didn't deserve it. In our singleness, with faith, we learn to, to focus on the beauty of Christ 
and acknowledge that he, he is enough for me. His grace is enough for me. His grace will build me up into the man or woman of God that he has set me to be. And that grace comes with so many blessings in our lives. It, it, is, it will completely dramatically change us once we come to understand that, that, that gift of grace. Amen. So I just want to say thank you guys for listening. I hope that this message um, spoke to you, edify you in some shape or form. And I just want to quickly just pray for you guys. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, I just thank you for this word that you placed in my heart, Lord. I pray that that those who listen would just understand that although we don't deserve it, you have freely given us your grace, Lord, to 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 grow and to, to be strengthened and to just receive blessings that you set out for us, Lord. Um, and for those single young adults who are experiencing uh, a season of singleness and they may have been a tough time and they're, they find themselves looking for grace in other areas, Lord, I just pray that they would just fix their eyes on, your, on you, Lord Jesus, and that they would just allow you to give them that gift of grace so that they may be strengthened and they would be patient with you, Lord, and that they would be changed so that when that moment comes in their life, Lord, they would meet their future husband and future spouse, Lord, that they would be more than prepared because they fixed their eyes on you and they were allowing you to prepare them, Lord Jesus. And I just thank you for that all that you have done for us, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, Thank you guys for listening. Hope to see you guys next week. Take care. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Join the conversation and leave a comment below. To hear more messages, make sure to subscribe. If you would like to learn more about Good Shepherd Ministries, visit us on Facebook or check out our GSM website. Thank you, and as always, God bless.